Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast, Wednesday Night Edition, live. live. Yes, yes, yes. So as you can see, it's myself, Bruce, host of the Format Podcast, and my main man, the Transformer. Transformer, what's good, bro? Man, not much, brother. Chilling, maintaining. How about you, brother? Hey, man, doing the same thing, man. Can't ask for much more than that. All right, man, you, you you ready to do this? I'm ready to rock and roll. That's it, that's it. All right, but before we get started, uh, giving you our, our week nine pickums as we are wont to do on Wednesday nights, and then uh, talk a little NFL. As you can see, we only have two topics on the rundown here. It's going to be a kind of short show, um, and that's my fault. I got, I got tied up here because I was doing a college football show earlier. It was supposed to get done last night, but blah, 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 things happened, and so I was doing that, and... Now we're here. So, but we we are here to deliver that pick 'em for y'all. And um, then we're gonna we're gonna talk some Dak Prescott and the uh and the Cowboys. And the but Dallas before Cowboys. we get in, <laughs> right before we get into all that, you know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up if you're enjoying the content make sure you give us that like that five star review and drop a comment all that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm helps us find more sports fans helps more sports fans find us and finally make sure you write it down put it in your phone set an alarm do whatever you got to do to remember saturday nights at 7 p.m we are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in talk to us get at me i love it i can't all right so here's the deal man here's the deal um you want me you want me to do this or you want to take this Go away. <laughs> All right. Take so it here's away, the deal, brother. Man. I've had this discussion slash argument, whatever, with a couple of different um, friends and, and groups that I talk sports with, right? With whom I talk sports, I should say. And so we have this Dak Prescott thing. And as we know, it was a big point of contention uh, the last time he got a contract because Derry, uh, Derry, Jerry Jones always kind of waits till the last minute to pay these guys. And then Dak Prescott ended up being the highest paid player in NBA NFL history. I didn't like it then. And Dak finishes out his contract last year, second team all pro. So I got to give him credit where it's due and then goes ahead and OK, we'll talk about that. But um, his, his contract comes up this year again. And I'm thinking Jerry finally has wised up because Dak in eight years in the league only has two playoff wins, never gotten you past the divisional round. So I'm like, OK, he's wised up. He's going to really put Dak's feet to the fire, make him prove something this year or let him walk at the end of the year or accept whatever it is Jerry's going to offer. Because that's what I've been saying. Make a reasonable offer, but tell him, hey, you can go out there and check it because I don't believe anyone is going to. Well, you don't say it to him, but Jerry, I'm sure, wouldn't believe that anyone was going to give Dak 60 million dollars a year. I sure as hell wouldn't have. And he doesn't deserve it. But anyway, um. Jerry Jones ends up caving as usual, giving Dak everything he wants because Dak already had a he had a no trade. He had a no franchise tag clause. And those are the two big ones. So he ends up giving him the new deal. And the new deal has Dak Prescott at four years, two hundred and forty million dollars, the richest contract in history with total guarantees of two hundred thirty one million. And uh, fully guaranteed, which is money guaranteed at signing of one hundred twenty nine million and an $80 million signing bonus. So he he basically uh, breaks everything, right? He's got the uh, average salary, which is the highest ever of $60 million. So Jerry, you know, I, I don't know what he was waiting for. But anyway, the point is this, right? Dak Prescott is a very good quarterback. I am not saying Dak Prescott is a bum. He's a very good quarterback, but he's never going to get you where you need to be. And so I've been banging the table the whole time. Don't pay him, Jerry. Don't pay him. And people's, why are you in that man pocket? Why are you pocket watching? Why you don't want him to get paid? It's not, I don't want him to get paid. And I keep saying this. I'm not against guys getting paid. I'm about guys getting paid for what they demonstrate. Not this wherever the market is. That's, that's not good. This whole, the NFL model of you're up next so you get paid more is faulty, right? Um, so you look at a guy like Dak Prescott. This is from last year. When the Green Bay Packers, with a first-year starter at quarterback, mm. walked into Dak's house and ate his lunch, right? Lunch. Now, people are gonna say, 
Thank you, Transformer. <laughs> the, the Packers absolutely smoked these dudes. Now, the score didn't look so bad at the end, but guess what? Empty calories, empty calories, right? He got a bunch Correct. of empty calories to try to bring this game back. But people are going to say, Cowboys fans are going to say, and the, the mainstream sports media pro Cowboys are going to say, well, um, the defense didn't show up for the Cowboys, and that's absolutely true. But what do I always say in a situation where the defense doesn't show up? If you're that guy and you're that quarterback, you are supposed to turn the game into a shootout. Thank you. You're supposed to turn the game into a damn shootout. You're supposed to give your team every opportunity to have success. Instead, Dak is out here throwing pick sixes and interceptions in the playoffs. Bad freaking look. Bad freaking look. So they pay this guy all this money. And Mm -hmm. what have we seen from Dak Prescott this year? Well, the odd couple uh, on Monday night was actually discussing Dak Prescott. And this is what kind of led me to thinking that we needed to discuss this topic. One, because I love being right. And I've been saying it for like the past two years. Don't do it. And Jerry did it anyway. But let's hear what the odd couple, uh, Rob Parker and Kelvin Washington and their producer, Rob G, had to say about Dak Prescott. And then we'll come back. I'll get Transformers thoughts and we'll go on from there. Okay. So it's a tale of two Dax. There you go. See, see what I did there? Ak, yeah. Ak, a Dak, right. Dak, 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 Dak. It's a brother. That's so right. last season <laughs> in a contract year, Dak Prescott had the best year of his a career. Balled out, right? All pro, thirty six touchdowns, nine picks. He was doing everything that you'd want in a franchise. Quarterback. I hate the thing that they say he was second in MVP voting because Lamar got all the first place votes except for one. <laughs> so was he really? Was he really hey, second? Someone got somebody got to finish second, yeah. okay. bro. You're running a race, you even know if what I, I mean by you saying both. You, you still wow. were there. <laughs> and, and as Dub mentioned, he's already got eight interceptions this season in less than half a year. So it's not looking good for Dak, but it gets worse. This season, fresh off an all-pro year last year and the richest contract in NFL history through, what is it, week eight now. He's 23rd in completion percentage, 22nd yeah, in passing yards per attempt, 25th in TD and interception ratio, 24th in passer rating. So to say that he's fallen off a cliff would be an understatement. And the thing, when you watch him, if it ain't CD, it ain't happening. That's the thing. You see they had a couple of touchdowns, uh, the ones that he threw this week, and it's it just, you see, they're so reliant upon him that if, if it ain't working, they can't get him going, then there's nothing really there. So imagine that. You hear how low he is among starting quarterbacks and all these uh, important metrics, and this is the guy you just gave everything to. Like, I don't get it. Like, it's so hard to pay a guy for having a crazy year in a contract year. How many times do we see that across multiple sports that dudes are in their contract year? They and ball they out. Go ham with, thank you. Yep. They go ham, they ball out to get paid, and then it's like, uh, okay, what now? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They come back and it's like, I got my money. I'm good. You can't do anything about it. Fire the coach, you know, do something else. But um, I'm going to stop talking. I've been talking about this for a minute. Transformer, I would love to get your thoughts on this Dak Prescott situation and what we have and have not seen from him this year. I, I would I would love for you to give me more ammunition to talk about. I mean, you were on the money, brother. <laughs> you on the money. I've been saying it. <laughs> Yes, all you have. season, man. It's been saying it since last year. Mm-hmm. Been saying it since the year before, and in the year before, right before mm-hmm. we, before I even was so graciously uh, being able to join this podcast with you. Dak Prescott without a run game is below average. Dak Prescott without a run game is below average. When you put the football in Dak Prescott's hands to go win you the football game, he will fold. He will throw a pick, he will fumble it, mm-hmm. or he just won't get it done, right? There's It's proof after, what's this, eight season, eight, eight nine season. seasons? Eight mm-hmm. seasons. Mm-hmm. Eight seasons in the NFL, and we keep seeing the same thing over and over and over and over and over. Yet, mm-hmm. Jerry said, pay the man. <laughs> I don't get it, man. Jerry, Jerry said, pay the man, and since you've paid him, Dallas Cowboys are now a whopping three and four in their division. A whopping three and four in their division. Let's look at what their losses came to. The Saints in week Mm. two. Ravens in week three. Lions Mm. in week six. 49ers in week seven. The Mm. teams that you did beat. Oh, let's count them out. The Browns. The Doodle Browns in week one. The Giants in week four. And you just got by the Steelers in week five. So you honestly only have one game on that schedule 
where it was against a quality team. Mind Mm -hmm. you, that team also had uh, uh, Justin Fields. So they couldn't really like score, like threaten you to score. Game Mm -hmm. was 20 to 17. Other than that, what it what, what when when it becomes a competition, bro, you fold. The mm-hmm. Saints were competition. This was before Derek Carr got hurt. He got mm-hmm. blown out. Yep. The Ravens, you were getting blown out. And then the Ravens mm-hmm. kind of let up, let up a little bit. Yep. And that's when you know we had that conversation. But you were getting blown out. But yet that chase down, that comeback, we're talking about, hey, look, hey man, Dak Prescott did what he was supposed to do. Did you watch the football game? No. Because he put him in the hole. Where were these yards? Where were these touchdowns? Right. In the first, second, third quarter. Not when you're down 15, right? Mm-hmm. You look at the Lions. You got blown out by 47 to 9. You look at the 49ers. You were getting blown out. I think it was 30 to 10. Or 29 or 27 to 10. I think it was 27. 27 to 10 before you made this comeback and made mm-hmm. it look like it's closer because now the score ends at 30 to 24, right? Mm-hmm. It's the same thing over and over and over, man. The man doesn't have a run game. So guess what? Dak Prescott is back to below average, mm-hmm. right? He's back to that fourth or fifth round pick that you guys got from Mississippi State. That's what he is. But you paid him. You <laughs> Jerry paid him, bro. I, hey, look, I laughed when he did it. I, when, I, I can remember when I saw the, uh, the tweet come through my phone from Ian Rappaport, and I immediately sent it to you. I, I wanted to be a fly on the wall when you read it. <laughs> I wanted to be a fly on the wall to be like, yeah, like, are you, are right. you serious? <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? Yeah, um, yeah. To see you discuss, man. But it's just, it's just mm-hmm. overall bad, man. I mean, Jerry, I, I, I'll be honest to say, I don't, I think he's losing all mental control of, or mental stability to be able to run that franchise. He said mm-hmm. something that was be, uh, bonkers. I heard uh, Stephen A. Um, on the uh, uh, on one of the ESPN shows talking about it, and he literally was making comments about how NFL contracts are like scholarships of co- for college, and like you know you know players receive five to you know four to five scholarships. We're like what? Like it's just like he's starting to not even make sense anymore, right? Like not only are you not making the correct decisions for your football team, but now you're going out here making just you know outlandish or just kind of scratch your head moment kind of uh kind of statements and we're like jerry what the hell are you talking about mm-hmm. right you know like so yeah i mean y- you're right man i i had nothing else to go on but the fact that you mm-hmm. know they're three and four and they play the falcons and possibly could be three and five play the eagles they could possibly it. be three and six That's they right. could play the texans and be three and seven they could That's play the right. commanders and been three and eight they could mm-hmm. beat the giants to be four and, eight. and then like at that point you know it's curtains it's curtains. Mm-hmm. So go ahead, brother. Yeah, no, you're you're 100 percent right. And I just again, I think to the point and I think we talked about it on this show. Jerry loves the show more than he loves trying to win. He loves the show of, you know, everybody um, in the in the NFL media discussing it all summer. What's he going to do about CD um, Lamb? What's he going to do about uh, what's he going to do about um, Dak Prescott? Like that's that's the issue that we have. You know what I'm saying? And um, he loves the attention more than he loves trying to win. And so uh, th- it's just coming back to bite him. This is what he gets because winning is clearly not important despite what he says. He doesn't demonstrate it. So it is It is what it is, you know? Um, come on, Tyler. Come on. Stop, 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 stop. So here's, here's the deal. Pat Mahomes, yes, he might be 23rd in QBR this year, right? And... Um, Dax got him in some key categories, but guess what? Let's keep this simple. If there's a game on the line or a big game to play, period, there's no way you can tell me, no matter what the stats and the metrics are, that you're taking crap Dak Prescott over Patrick Mahomes. There is no way. There's no way. I know you know sports better than that. You, you've you've made that clear to us many times. There's Tyler, no do way. Do you know who the number one in the NFL and quarterback rating is in the fourth quarter? Boom. Tell him. Patrick Mahomes. Tell him. <laughs> so that's that's the that's the separator, right? That's, there that's you the separator. Go. When it comes when shit go. hits the fan, mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes is that guy, right? Get you know, there's a game that needs to get beat. Patrick Mahomes is gonna deliver. We've seen that countless mm-hmm. amount of times. When that's you're right. like, okay, man, there's no way this game is done. People walk off the field literally mm-hmm. thinking, like, man, okay, we we did it. 
I leave the field. We got to lead. Defense, go do your job. Pat right. literally drinks a beer. <laughs> All right. Let's go get it. <laughs> he goes out there and go get it done. <laughs> every time. Every time he freaking makes <laughs> – he lets the opposing quarterback sit on the sideline and mm. watch his team lose the game. That's right. That's he's right. made it. He's done it over and over. Dak Prescott literally just – Super Bowl. He, ma- he makes – yeah, he's done it twice in the Super Bowl, but he mm-hmm. makes his po- like uh, Dak Prescott in the fourth quarter just makes the quarterback to the other side like he's doing this again. <laughs> this is a blowout, man. He's doing this again. Like, come on, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Just take it, take it L like a like a, like a, like a man, bro. <laughs> now you got to make right. it look like it was close. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fluff your stats mm-hmm. a little bit. That's what he does, mm-hmm. man. But go ahead, brother. Yeah, no. So Bruce actually said earlier. He said a while back in the chat. He believes that what's happening here is that and and we're missing that um, he believes that the Cowboys are trying to put themselves in position to draft Shadur Sanders. Now, I have no issue with that. Shadur is clearly far and away, in my estimation, the best quarterback in this draft, far and away. But that's a different story. My thing is this. They're not trying to draft Shadur Sanders for what? How long is he going to sit when Dak is making 60 million dollars a year? Like you just, don't just got it too. Yeah, just got, just it. got it. You know, that's a four year deal. So it's going to be at least three years before you can get out from under that. Shadur's Correct. not sitting for three years. So it doesn't even make sense. You don't, you don't do that. I, I can't see it. I could be wrong, but I, I cannot see that. I don't think Dion uh, lets that happen. He's not going to let that happen. He's not yeah, going to let no. his son get signed son and play. sit for three years. <laughs> like, nah, bro. Nah, my, you see my kid in college? He was like, nah, you can sit at Anthony Richardson for three years. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. Tyler, you wild, man. Look, here's the deal, Tyler. <laughs> Look, Lamar is great, but Ric Flair said something, what, 35, 40 years ago. To be the man, you got to be the man. And so there's the no... There's no hoping the man retires or the man goes away. You got to beat the man. So and this you know, man is young too. That's yeah. that's what's even more yeah. scary. Anybody who wants it is going to have to go through Mahomes. Pause. That's what you're going to have to do. I mean, plain and simple, he's the man right now. He's never not played in a conference final game in the playoffs. That's in his insane. That's, that is insane. That is. And so that's that's <laughs> no like, shot at Lamar or anybody else. But you're yeah. going to have to beat this guy if you want the chip. That's all. And to and me, don't let that up. Creates, that's competition, man. That creates better competition. So I love it. Yeah. Um, and don't go up 10. That man's favorite yeah. number is 10. Don't go right. up 10 on Patrick Mahomes. For some odd reason, he sees 10 and he goes mm-hmm. from 10 to 1,000. Because he's like, okay, we down 10? Say less. Mm-hmm. We're winning this game. You know that, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I, but uh, who, who, uh, I think Jordan said, uh, used to say this. Uh, he'll be in the middle of the game. Oh, yeah. The, uh, no, I talk, like no, I, I want to see y'all talk shit when you when you're down, right? right He's like, yeah, right, it's all right, good right. to talk shit when you're up, right? Mm-hmm, yeah, I think mm-hmm. he had a bat in his hand. I don't know what game. I think it was an All Star game or something. Yeah, he had a bat yeah, in his yeah, hand. Yeah. Like, yeah, he was like, it's different when folks talk shit when they up, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, it's when you talk shit when you're down. That's what scares that's folks. Yeah, <laughs> and they no come doubt. back and they do it. That's Pat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pat the one is like, are we down ten? Say less, fam. That's oh, it. y'all now y'all want to play? All right, here I we go. Right. You're right. You know, that dude, that dude's man, that dude is crazy, man. That team is crazy from top yeah. to bottom. Like, bro, they yeah. it's like they can't miss. When, when you think that that team has a flaw, they fix it mm-hmm. immediately, like right there yeah. in your face. And you're like, damn, mm-hmm. I thought they had a secondary issue. Well, no, they fixed that. Oh man, I thought they had a defensive tackle issue. No, nah, Chris Jones, they fixed that. I thought mm-hmm. they had a running back issue. No, nah, Pacheco freaking went and got went back in the trash and got back up. Uh, Kareem Hunt, man, they fixed Kareem that. Hunt. They fix Re- that yeah, receiver yeah. issue, like damn, pick one, G- give me something to work with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And folks, fix it, bro. No doubt, That's no what, doubt. Yeah, all right, let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna put the number in the chat 904 219 8264. 904 219 8264. I'm gonna open up the lines now, and uh, anybody who wants to call in, give your thoughts on Dak Prescott and this ridiculous contract he got, and the fact that he is clearly not living up to it. Uh, I want to hear your thoughts, or or maybe you call me a Dak hater. I don't know. I've heard that too, but I, nah. I don't know how. I'm just telling the truth. But I have heard that. So uh, give me a call nine zero four two one nine eight two six four. It's in the chat and also scrolling on the bottom of your screen. You so, you know uh, why no yeah. one will call you a Dak hater? Oh no, I've been called that man. But I mean, ahead. but you know why nobody will call you that now? Like okay. now, right? <clears throat> because even the Dallas Cowboy fans are tired of it. 
Mm -hmm. I have a lot of Dallas Cowboy family members, friends, mm -hmm. and literally they are tired of it. My little brother, uh, John John, mm -hmm. I'm going to say, bro, call me when, you know, when we change our coach or we change or Jerry Jones goes <laughs> away. Right. Like, just, just like, don't tag me at nothing, Dallas. He don't want to hear it. It's, mm -hmm. it's like it's still DC F FL Dallas Cowboy for like whatever they want to call it yeah, Dallas yeah, Cowboy for life, right? Mm -hmm. But they're like, man, don't 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 text me about nothing. Don't call me about nothing. We're, we're just tired, bro. Right, we're tired right. of Dak Prescott because everything we've been saying over the years is just coming to light, right? You That's take it. one game away from him, what is he? He's mm -hmm. CD Lamb dependent. When CD Lamb is yes. not there, who else is he? Mm -hmm. What else can he do? Right? He's not right. going out there scrambling, making plays, right? right? Nope. You know, in the fourth quarter, he's already down 15 to 20, so he's trying to make a comeback when mm -hmm. the defense is at its softest point because you know as a defender, you're playing 7 to 10 yards off the football because mm -hmm. you're not – nothing cheap, nothing deep. Right. right? Like, right. So I'm not going to not gonna let you no go doubt. over the top, right? So, no yeah, man, no. Mm -hmm. Um, Quick note, man, I, I wish G was here for this one. I just pulled up that uh, the, the Celtics game here, and – um. Tatum's got 36. He's 10 for 23. I don't know why he, he shot. He's five for 16 from three, man. Chill with the damn threes. But anyway, oh, Jalen Brown is uh, Mr. Brown. He's 11 for 28 and one for 10 from three. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, um, not that I'm taking shots at Mr. Brown. I love that guy. He's my brother. But that said, you know, we got to absolutely. But we got to <laughs> stop this nonsense that Mr. Brown carries Tatum and all this other foolishness. But whatever. Um, let's see. QBs are hard to get, even if Dak's caliber. Okay, I could Tatum. see teams come calling if Dak wears out his welcome in Dallas this year. Really? Who who's clearing out sixty million dollars a year for this dude? But Raiders. It, it, I wouldn't. He's in his eighth year. I just drafted Earl Sanders. True. I do if you don't do get it. Him. If you don't get the you, pick, you make a deal to get the pick. I mean, I'm just saying, but the team trade. in front of me may want Sadir. Yeah. So they're not, they not going to trade him. I, I think mm. it, the only team that is allowed to trade Sadir is New England right now. <laughs> right. That's because, it. yeah, yeah. They got Drake May. Like, you know, I, right. I think Drake May is going to be a, a good quarterback, right? So, I think so too. That, you got to give him some help. They got to figure yeah, that out. They, they, they need to trade that back and get multiple picks. So, if you're not mm -hmm. trading, if, New Eng if it's not New England at the number one pick, I mean, they're probably looking at it like, damn, you know, we might as well go get Dak Prescott and see what we got. We got Brock Bowers, go get it. Just go draft right, a receiver right. or something. You know, yeah. who knows? Yeah. Who knows?